Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about building a procedural animation using mainly just a single source. This week's tutorial is inspired by this animation I found on Reddit. It's by a guy named Keyframed. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. They mentioned making a tutorial for it, so if I see that, I'm going to link that below as well. I'm not looking to recreate this exact animation. I was really just inspired to use text to build pretty much everything in an animation. As always, there's a project file you can download. We're going to go pretty quickly through most of the steps that I took along the way, but everything that you can see is going to be in the file download. Nearly everything is built with this source comp. I have the source for this text set up as a master property so it can be changed in all of the other comps. But everything is basically this. And if you notice, this is actually the second layer. Because later on, we're going to use one weird click and the results will amaze you. All right, so let's check out where we started. It's more just an exploration than anything really interesting. This one uses the text itself with fractal noise to make a map that we can use for other effects. And we carry on with that idea into test number two where we have hex tile, making some different hexagon patterns, and then more fractal noise. The animation for that led into this kind of weird jiggle thing. I ended up breaking that up into its own thing into test number three. This is a fractal noise that is scaling up and we're using it for displacement in the other layer. And you know me, once I put displacement on something, I just keep displacing things. So that led to this, which is more of that hex tile stuff in there in the background, some noise, and more displacement. Then I started messing around with some amino effects and this one amino diffusion is interesting, but I didn't really mess around with that too much because I started to use grid and I noticed I could get some interesting stuff if I use stencil alpha with my grid. Like this text is dots and the grid size is scaling in. And combining most of those steps, we get this, which takes a long time to render. So we'll be back sort, shortly. So this is almost completely built with just the source comp, but there are some other effects on top of it. Most of those are related to color and different blurs. So let's take a look at this version, which doesn't have any of that stuff. Other than the background and our controller layer, everything else is that source comp. If I turn this off, you'll see. So let's first take a look at this controller layer. And there's nothing on it. And that's because in this version, we're just using the name itself of this layer to define what the name here will be. So if I change it to like workbench, it'll be workbench. The main layer is this one called grid growth. So I'm going to solo that one. You can see we're starting off with a fractal noise. It's animated from more contrast and less brightness to less contrast and more brightness so that this shows up more as we move along. Then on top of that, I have a grid effect and it's set to stencil alpha. Let me open this up so we can actually see the keys. The border on this thing goes from a smaller size to a larger size so it fills in. In this case, it fills in completely, but if you want it to be a little bit different, you can actually drop this down so where it's less than the width, go like 4.8, and you'll still have those dots in there. I'm going to undo that though because I wanted it filled. Then I'm using extract to take away the dark areas at the beginning. It's kind of like a CC image wipe in this case, but it flows a little bit better. And at the end, it all just fills in completely. That's it for that layer. These layers that are called screen blur basically do the same thing. See the fractal noise, grid effect, extract. But then I have a box blur. And on this version, I have a bunch of different noise so that this is kind of grainier. I could have just made a noise layer above it and used it for like a luma mat, but my goal was just to use the text layers. The second screen blur is basically the same thing. It just doesn't have that noise and the blur radius is wider. On both of them, they're just set to blur horizontally. So it kind of gives you the screen glow. The main animation at the beginning is done with these highlight layers. So you can see these draw on like an edge and that's just a CC light sweep with an intense edge, a very wide size. And as the center point moves over, the angle changes. And then we have this other highlight layer, which is basically the same thing, except we're adding a solid composite to that. So that we fill in the background. Then we're going to minimax. And then we run the levels to crush it down. So we kind of get these like edges in here that fill in. So then the final highlight, we have another CC light sweep. In this case, we have a solid composite and a minimax as well. And we have the levels just like in the previous one. Then we add a vector blur, which makes the edge look interesting, kind of breaks it up. And then we use mosaic to make those broken up pieces into blocks again. I just set it to a tenth of the comp in each direction. So we have 192 by 108 blocks. I also clicked on sharp colors because otherwise it'll be very subtle, almost invisible. 
all these layers are set to add and when we add them all together you get an interesting blocky edge drawing in these kind of interesting with these flashes on the edges so we add that to the grid growth and the two screen blurs that we have already that we've discussed we get this so one of the next things i did was this line let me just solo that again on its own as you can see it's kind of a line of just the middle part of our text this is accomplished with a couple of different things we have a fractal noise so it's not exactly just white then we're using cc line sweep that's animated to crunch in the top and bottom of this line then we have this block load which actually breaks up the parts where it gets a little bit bigger these things are just keyframed with hold keyframes so that it moves around. We also have a CC scale wipe, which stretches everything from one side, and then a transform effect to move the position around. That also uses hold keyframes. I used transform because I wasn't sure initially how moving everything would work, but you could probably just use regular position if you wanted to. I also was thinking I might add more stuff to it, in which case I might want the transform effect in there. So now we've explained everything other than the top two layers, which are patterns that add on top of this. So again, this pattern is built off of source text. If I turn all of these effects off, you can see we got our source text here. To that, we've added the CC Collider, which gives us this interesting pattern. We add a solid composite so that we fill in the black in the background and added a noise to that. And then I've added motion tile and all of the settings are the same as the default, but the tile width and tile height have been set to two. This allows the whole tile to really stretch out you could change it to something smaller if you want, but then you pretty much just get lines. If you change these up, you can get more interesting things like four is kind of cool on this one. Maybe five here. We turn that off. It'll add little subtle lines to this. I like that a little bit more, so I'm going to leave that in here. So what's really cool about this is that if we turn this off and solo it again, you can see that this is our layer. If I change this text, we get a completely different pattern. So if we add these back on, you can see that now this looks completely different. So let's turn this off. It's very subtle in the way that I've done it. But if you experiment with your effects, you can get completely different things just by changing your text. So then the last thing is just these dots, which are very light in here. Let me make them 100% for now. And these are made with another grid, which is inverted in this case. We have the width set to 40, and then the border is just one pixel smaller. I have a solid composite on this one, but it's kind of unnecessary, so I'm going to dump it. Sometimes when I just duplicate the layers, I leave the effects on there and add more to it. And then I clean it up later. So then I have CC lens added to this to give the, this curve. And then I'm doing a fast box blur, horizontal only at four so that these aren't just dots. So I turn this back off, set this back to 50, just something subtle in the background. And that's basically how the previous one was set up. I just have grain that I'm adding to it. I have a gradient layer here so that if I want to, I can use a depth of field kind of camera blends blur. I'm going to turn that off. What's giving it this almost subsurface kind of look is a compound blur that I have set. For the first compound blur, I'm using that grid growth layer. So it's basically the majority of the text. And then without the second one on here, this first part gets a little weird. So I added it for that line layer as well. I actually have it extend past where the line layer exists. So it kind of leaves a like a blurry distortion for a second, which I thought was kind of neat. So I left it. Then I also had CC lens on here at some point to get some kind of weird curved thing to the text beginning but ultimately i decided i didn't like it but i left it in here in case you want to mess around with that and then i just have the color layer that is a tritone that tints all of this text and as it goes along it goes from orange to yellow i was initially going to use tint but with the gray tones in the text it was helpful to have that mid-tone so that's the entire setup for this thing so taking it a bit further, I was showing Sev this this morning, and he said that it would be kind of cool if this was like recessed a panel or something where it glows through. And this is just kind of a cast off thing in the middle of making that where I was trying to make an edge and I shifted some stuff over and it looked kind of neat. So I left that in here. This one is closer to what we were thinking. It's not exactly how I would build it. It should occlude differently. I'm just using simple layer styles on here for drop shadows. Like in reality, you wouldn't see this D inside edge because if this was sticking up in a panel, this actually would be over top of it. You'd only see into it here. You might be able to mat things like this out and make it look right, but I just kind of wanted to get an idea of what it would look like. If you want to experiment with this, the two layers are down here. There's the soft edge and the hard edge. The hard edge obviously gives you this hard edge here, and the soft edge is supposed to provide a little bit more glow as it gets closer, as if we're kind of seeing like maybe like a metal piece that's up against the glowing part of the text. 
So it's just something to experiment with. And then the last thing I have in here is this line load example. And I've set this up so that there are two sliders on the controller layer in this one. And there's our source text in here. And the line load completion here will actually draw a line through it. So generally the line sweep will only go from one direction. It won't leave like a sliver in the middle of the text. I want to experiment with this in a future tutorial. So I built a rig to do the line sweep from both sides along with a slider that lets you change how thick this part in the middle is. And actually, because of the way this thing works, you can actually go to zero and still get pieces as you go through, which is pretty cool, actually. I like how you can see the, just like the edge of this going across, or you can make it bigger and move it through like that. So I'm not going to really go over how this one's built. We'll explain this in a future tutorial. So that's the entire setup. Basically, we just mess with text in wacky different ways and combine them and build a whole bunch of junk and then see what we get. All right, so what about our clickbait? Well, if we take this shy guy off here, you can see there's drone downtown. We click this on and there we got some imagery from a drone downtown. So I'm using extract to take out all the dark areas so that we have an alpha, which is important for this to work. Now, if we click over here on our final animation, you can see it looks like that, which you would have seen if you saw the thumbnail. And this is what it looks like animated. It holds here at the beginning because that's part of that light sweep. I could have moved it back off the left, but I didn't want to change anything with a text animation. You can see it's still clear through here in the yellow, which is pretty neat. I like how the edges kind of show up in all of these buildings and everything. And that's why you need the alpha. It also looks pretty neat if we look at it with just the white. As you can see, this version renders a lot faster because we're not doing all the blurs and all that kind of stuff. This texture from the text is also way more apparent in the background. And again, it still does that thing with a light sweep. But other things look interesting with that too. Not that one. That one's pretty cool though. The line load does the same thing. So if we go through here and we change the completion on it, you can see it goes through the whole frame. If we go back to some of these beginning ones, you can see what it looks like with that as well. This one's kind of weird. It's got a lot of different flashes from different stuff that's in here. But the ending frame is pretty neat looking. This one's kind of interesting with that hexatile and that wave. I don't know where you'd use this particular look, but maybe you can find something. The jiggle alone might be useful, though. And these other versions are probably just crazy. Yes. Yep. This one I thought was really interesting because I've done some other stuff already with these dots like this. But what's really cool is the interaction between the transparent text and the windows of this building give you like this weird color shift. It's kind of like the Stargate effect from 2001. So I might have to mess with that in the future as well. And so we're back from outer space. So that's that. And in case you were wondering, if we turn off this blur, that's what it looks like all crisp in yellow. All crisp. And that's it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe if you like this video because we do a new one every week. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>